Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we've got one for the programmers. Today we're talking about a lower level cross-platform rendering framework. It provides more than that. This one basically provides the building blocks for you to build your own game engine on top of. So this is not for people that, you know, want to have a turnkey game engine and make games. This is more for one that people that want to make their own game engines, uh, but don't want to have to reinvent the wheel and don't have to work directly at the metal level of using APIs like well, Metal or Vulkan or OpenGL or similar. This abstracts away that level of difficulty for you and provides a number of the building blocks on top that you need to build a game engine yourself. And it's provided by a company called Confetti. Now, Confetti is a maker of middleware. They make three particular pieces of middleware. First one is the um, Aora Dynamic Global Illumination System. The next one is blinding your eyes a bit here. Pixel Puzzle, a post via a post effects system, and then finally they make uh, a thermos, a dynamic um, sky dome system. So they they are a graphics manufacturer, but on top of that, they're also a um, services company, and they provide technical services for game engine makers. So if you come into their services section here, they've got things like integrating their middleware packages into your game engine, adding special special effects to your games, extending an existing game engine, evaluation of your game engine, and then graphic consultation. So they're both a middleware manufacturer and a services company for other game engine makers. And the reason why we are talking about them today is because of the Forge. Now the Forge is, as I mentioned early on, a cross-platform rendering framework. Um, you can see here from this tagline, the Forge cross-platform rendering framework for PC, Linux, ray tracing, Mac OS, slash iOS, Android, Xbox, PS4, Switch, and Stadia. I do find it kind of interesting that ray tracing is considered a platform in that list, but eh, can't argue with it. Now, one thing to be aware of, these ones always come with an asterisk. We'll get to that in just a second. But a couple cool things to know about this particular cross-platform framework is it is built on the Apache 2.0 game license. I will link this with the linked article with all the stuff down below, by the way, so don't worry about that. Um, but uh, Apache 2.0 is pretty liberal in what it allows you to do. It absolves you of some responsibility when working with it. Um, you have to keep licensing intact and a few other things. Just click the license to find out more details. But for the most part, whenever you see the words Apache or MIT or Zlib, you're good to go. So those are my three favorite, I guess you could call it, um, code licenses as an end user. They, they really don't limit what you can do, which is cool to see. Now, it's also very actively under development. They only do pushes when there's a new change out. That's why you're not seeing uh, active updates like daily. Uh, they develop offline, push them out with new builds, I do believe. So we'll get into a little bit of the details of the Forge. And the Forge is all about that abstraction layer. So again, they, they are over top of the underlying hardware to provide cross-platform support to you. Um, and if you've worked with Vulkan, you will appreciate that level of abstraction for you. So once again, we get into the platforms, Windows 10 with DirectX 12, Vulkan, and we've got um, DXR or DirectX Ray Tracing in there. And then we've also got a DirectX 11 fallback layer, although not extensively tested. So that's kind of key. We got um, Linux Ubuntu 18.04 with Vulkan 1.1 and Ray Tracing support in there. Uh, now, this one is interesting and probably one of the biggest gotchas with using this graphics framework. Uh, Android Pi with Vulkan 1.1 is the cutoff. So if you've got an older Android device and you want to support it, you're on your own here. There is seemingly no underlying OpenGL here. So Vulkan or DX are your kind of minimalist. So it's built on top of modern graphics frameworks only. So for the older pre-Pi Android phones out there, you're kind of out of luck with this framework. And then we've got Mac OS support. And then as I mentioned earlier on, all the proprietary platforms are actually supported and this is a problem that any open source project runs into uh, you need to have a uh, NDA and a agreement in place with the various different hardware manufacturers you have to have access to their SDKs in order to make use of them uh, this is something that Godot runs into this is something that every single open source project out there runs into uh, so you need to have your own license to develop for the Xbox or the PlayStation or switch or if you're one of six people with stadia for stadia you need to have that agreement in place to make use of this framework on those platforms, but it does support those platforms. So we get into it, we've got a couple things we can look at with the Forge. The one key thing is the graphics layer. This handles a lot of the, the stuff that you would find kind of annoying. Descriptor management, uh, multi-threaded asynchronous resource loading, shader reflection, 
and multi-threaded command buffer generation. If you start to work with Vulkan, you'll realize that it's just taking care of a lot of the annoying work for you. Now, on top of that, though, the Forge is set up to be kind of like Lego pieces for building your own game engine on top of. So it provides a higher level function that you can work on top of, some of it depending on other open source libraries out there. So these higher level um, Lego blocks, if you're going to build your own game engine using the Forge, consist of asynchronous resource loading, Lua scripting, uh, animation system from an Oz animation system, based, sorry, based on the Oz animation system, uh, consistent math library, an extended version of the EASTL. Now the EASTL is a real-time performance oriented version of the standard template libraries created by Electronic Arts. Um, it's pretty commonly used in the world of game development where the traditional STL libraries are problematic. Uh, then we've got for resource uh, art asset loadings, we've got a modified version of AssImp. I covered AssImp on the channel in the past. It stands for Asset Import uh, Importer. Uh, it's a universal kind of library for loading various different graphics file formats out there. Consistent memory management for um, GPU and CPU. There's an input system with gestures for touch based on game put or Gaia input. I'm going to go with gain put. Um, we've got a fast entity component system with their own internally developed, and I'm not going to call this an entity component, an ECS system, because I do that every time, on their, their own in-house entity component system. That's what it's built on top of. Uh, Cross-platform file system API, so you could deal with the underlying hardware or disk system, even if that disk system happens to be zip archives uh, in a cross-platform manner. Uh, UI system based off the IM GUI libraries. Audio is based off the SoLoud libraries. A shader translator layer built on, um, oh, it's a superset of the HLSL or high-level shader language. The, that's the direct X11 and 12 shader language. Uh, whenever you're dealing with like this library it deals with both Vulkan and uh, HLSL, well, Vulkan doesn't really count, but if you're dealing with Vulkan and, sorry, um, DL, uh, DirectX and, say, OpenGL, you're going to have to abstract away the underlying shader layer at some point in time. Uh, this is kind of doing a translation layer to make that work for the, the superset of HLSL. And then various implementations of high-end graphic defects as shown in the unit tests below. Now, those unit tests are key. Uh, that is your documentation. So we get some news updates, things that have gone on. So I'll keep scrolling as I describe this. And there's no real major documentation, at least nothing that I can really find. But what there is, is um, a lot of unit tests. Now these unit tests are basically the examples to learn from. And we'll go through them in just a second. So you get an idea of the kind of capabilities and functionality that you can learn from. And then we'll jump into one of them and I'll show you it's still not uh, an easy easy thing to pick up. Also be aware, Android Runtime does not support the following considering due to driver bugs. So do be aware, again, you're gonna struggle a little bit on the Android platform. Uh, so we get here, we got your basically, shows how to do a simple solar system. It is their hello world for cross-platform rendering examples. Uh, then we get uh, compute shader example, multi-threaded rendering. So you're gonna find that we've got pretty much uh, a whole swath of the kind of features and functionalities that you're going to want to implement from a game engine. This is their form of documentation. So here we got instance rendering, um, we got font rendering, we got materials playground, showcasing things like hair, metal rendering, wood rendering. We got hardware tessellation showing how to make grass, a GLTF model viewer, so even though you don't have a ton of documentation, you get a ton of these examples to work from. The light and shadows play around, and then it kind of just keeps going. So I'll just keep scrolling as we go. Hybrid ray trace shadows, pixel, or what was that, pixel perfect? Oh, pixel projected reflections, uh, multi-GPU support on Windows only, file system test or demonstration, and IM GUI demonstrator, so you can see how to use UI. This is the IM GUI interface being implemented, by the way. Um, and we got order independent transparency unit test, wave intrinsic unit test, ray tracing, and kind of keeps going and going. I think that was sparse textures. We got the uh, Oz animation being showcased or demonstrated, animation blending, joint attachments, partial blending, and so on, some physics baking. Um, yeah, so you've got a ton of different examples that will showcase all of the various different aspects of using this framework for implementing your own game. The one thing to be aware of though, before jumping in is again, it's not 
documented really. So if you don't understand code, it's not going to be the easiest thing you've ever saw. Oh, there's also, by the way, a micro profiler on top of that uh, shader translator they were talking about in terms of tools. So it's not going to be the um, easiest thing you've ever worked with it. And it's not really meant to the, the end audience here is people that are going to ultimately try to create their own game engine. So do be aware of that. Now, interesting enough, Forge is also used as the rendering framework for the Torque 3D game engine, which I covered in the past. All right, so here is the examples area. So we're back at the Forge. If you drill down in, there's this example section. Uh, what you wanna go into is unit tests. And here is where you are going to find uh, kind of how to do things. So again, that transformation is what they consider their Hello World project. And to give you an idea of what you're dealing with here, uh, even then, you're still looking at 843 lines of code. Now, lines of code is a pretty meaningless or stupid way to figure out difficulty. Because, so for example, here we have, you know, 26 lines of documentation, and we've got a ton of includes and setups. But it do, does give you an idea. You are working at a fairly low level of abstraction here. Now, compared to working at Vulkan, this is probably a quarter of the code that you would have to write to do something simple uh, as, like, draw a you know, a single triangle on screen. So even though it does seem like you're writing a ton of code to do a fairly small amount of stuff, this is also saving you a ton of work. And then again, keep in mind, this is also providing things like, um, you know, handling for shadowing, light ray tracing, file systems, sound, audio, um, cross-platform rendering, and so on. So all of the things that you're eventually going to have to deal with at the low level in a cross-platform manner for your game engine uh, are being dealt with here. Uh, so this is where you're learning from. If you can understand the code that you're seeing here, so let's go to the skinning example for a different example. If you can make sense of this code, this is your documentation for the most part. Um, it, it's, I, I get it. I, I don't find anything really that hard to, to understand. I find their code very readable and straightforward, uh, but this is mostly what you're working from. So if you're comfortable with that, this is definitely a framework to consider checking out. Now, if this is not ideal for you, but you want to work at this, uh, like a level above Vulkan, but below a game engine, um, back in... 2018 of June, uh, OpenGL was deprecated on Mac, or the, the announcement that OpenGL was being deprecated on Mac platforms went out. So I did kind of a bit of a rundown of some of the options that are out there. And some of the abstraction layers I covered, so we've got BGFX, if this doesn't apply for you, there's BGFX, another one that's not on this list is the BS framework. Uh, then we've got Caw Core, and then all, now also we have Kink. We have Ogre, which is a little bit higher towards the game engine, but still very much a framework approach. The Forge, which again, at the time I knew very, very, very little about. And then uh, Veldred, which is a .NET based version uh, built over top of Vulkan Direct 3D 11 and OpenGL and GLES. So if Android is a little bit more important to you or you're more interested in those .NET platforms, Veldred is definitely an option. Or of course, you can just use a game engine like uh, Godot, Unity, Unreal, CryEngine, um, Lumberyard, you name it. There's tons of options out there for you. But if you're looking for something kind of at the, that low level that you want to do it yourself, but you don't want to do it all yourself. Well, that's where the Forge kind of shines. What you've got here is a low-level abstraction layer for dealing with the hardware, and then you've got it handling the basic building blocks for you, input, touch, file system, and so on. And if you run into problems and you have money available, you can turn money into solutions because the company that is ultimately creating this graphics framework are also available for hire, which is a little bit rare. That's actually not as common as you might think. So if you're working on a professional-oriented product, but... Um, you know, you want that runway just in case you need to hire out. You've got a budget available potentially in the future. Having a project like this with professional backing could be a huge deal. Um, so definitely worth checking out. That was The Forge from Confetti. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.